Hello, everyone. My name is Hao Nanfeng. I am a third-year master student at Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. My research interest lies in analyzing security protocol using formal methods. The title of my talk today is a formal analysis of the FIDO UEF protocol. This is a collaborative work with my lab mate, Xue Songpan, and my advisors, Professor Hui Li and Professor Ziming Zhao from the University at Buffalo. As we all know, text-based passwords are still the most popular authentication method, even if they have many security weaknesses and have been a major attack service for e-business. Every year, billions of passwords are compromised, putting billions of users' sensitive data in danger. To enhance or even replace text-based passwords, Many academic and commercial schemes have been proposed in the last two decades. Among them, Fast Identity Online, or FIDO, has received a lot of attention recently. As of February 2021, more than 250 companies have become members of the FIDO Alliance, and more than 700 certified FIDO products are in the market. FIDO consists of two schemes, one is named Universal Authentication Framework, or UEF, using which users can log in to remote services without typing text-based passwords. The other scheme is called Universal Second Factor, which provides second factor authentication on the top of the password. In this talk, we will focus on UEF. At a high level, the UEF protocol has registration and authentication steps. In registration, the user logs in to a relying party, such as a, a, ba a banking website, using her original text-based password to register her trusted authenticator, such as a fingerprint sensor, which has a trusted attestation key. Then, the authenticator records her fingerprint, generates an authentication key for its website, signs the public part of the new key with the attestation key, and sends it to the website. The website links the user's online profile with the authentication key if it is valid. As a result, the trust between the relying party and the authenticator is established. In subsequent login attempts, the user only needs to authenticate herself to the fingerprint sensor, after which the website and the authenticator will run a challenge response protocol with the authentication key. Like all other protocols, FIDO UEF is vulnerable. Manual analysis has found some vulnerabilities in the protocol. However, they lack a formal foundation and are not capable for systematically verifying the properties of the UEF. Therefore, we resort to the formal methods. There are many formal verification tools which can automatically find attacks on the protocol and prove if a protocol satisfies the required security properties. Formal methods have helped the designs and revisions of real-world protocols, such as 5G or TRS 1.3. However, formally analyzing UEF is challenging for several reasons. First, the descriptions of UEF are scattered over 500 pages of specifications across 19 documents. Many security assumptions and security goals of the UEF are implicit and ambiguous. It takes a lot of time to digest the specifications and extract the security assumptions and goals. Second, the protocol is complicated because there are many entities and many channels, every one of which can be compromised in real-world settings. Third, the OF protocol has many optional steps, adding more complicated cases. For example, there are four types of authenticators, which lead to four versions of slightly different protocols. To overcome these challenges, we formalize the protocol process, security properties of specifications into process expressions, and present the threat models that covers different scenarios. 
Then we model them into applied pi calculus, the programming language of the ProVerif. The protocol process and threat models can be modeled into a process, and the desired goals can be modeled into query statements. The ProVerif can automatically analyze if the protocol satisfies a security goal. When we found an attack, it means the protocol cannot meet the security goal in this threat model. So we modify assumptions, which represent other scenario, and analyze if the protocol meets the security goals again. We developed a tool, uf -verif, which can automatically change the threat model and identify the minimal assumptions. To verify UEF, we consider its authentication, confidentiality, and privacy properties. We use the lowest authentication taxonomy to describe the authentication properties. We assume the crypto algorithms are perfect. We assume some protocol data fields are public. Others can be compromised or not. Our tool verifies if the security goals of UF hold when such fields are compromised to identify minimal assumptions. Because most entities in the UF protocol is in the user's device, they communicate with each other using inter-process communication channels. Since such channels have different characteristics than the public network channels, we model them in a different way than the DY model. We assume different malicious entities, such as ASM, UF client, can be installed. The attacker can use these malicious entities to participate in the protocol and communicate with some benign entities, but not every entity. Therefore, there are three possible scenarios where the malicious entity is a UF client. First, the malicious UF client can communicate with both ASM and user agent. Second, the malicious UF client can only communicate with user agent, but not with the ASM. Third, the malicious UF client can only communicate with ASM, but not with the user agent. The UF protocol process was described in 19, 900 lines of a ProVerif code. During this process, we find a bug of ProVerif 1.98 we were analyzing authentication goals in our threat model. We reported this bug to the developers of ProVerif who fixed the bug in ProVerif 1.1. We use observational equivalence to model and verify the unlikability. And the tool UFVerif, which we developed, has 500 lines of Python code. The code can automatically generate ProVerif input files to represent the protocol under different threat models. From weaker assumptions to stronger assumptions, the tool can automatically verify the protocol, record the results, and identify which assumption is the minimal assumption for a security goal. There are more than 4,100 generated cases, and it took more than 80 hours to analyze all cases on a personal computer. We use a table like this to, pre to present the analysis, to present the an analysis results. For example, to maintain the confidentiality of AK when using first bound and second bound authenticators. The minimal assumptions is the protocol cannot reveal the field token. And there can be no malicious authenticators who could communicate with the honest ASM. The proverb proves that as long as these two assumptions are met, the protocol satisfies the confidentiality of AK. Based on our minimal assumption results, we summarize some findings. When we assume there are malicious entities, the protocol cannot satisfy the confidentiality of some fields and some authentication goals. For instance, the UF protocol use KHSS token me mechanism for the authenticator to verify the ASM. However, we find this mechanism is futile. 
and the attacker can easily compute the token and impersonate the ASM. Also, the registration process is more vulnerable than authentication process. The attacker can aim at the registration process and control the user's account. We also find out the URL protocol satisfies the unlinkability property. Even if the relying parties are classic, they cannot distinguish whether their sessions are from the same user or not. And the UF protocol prevents phishing attacks from a malicious relying party or a malicious user agent. From the minimal assumptions, we identify four types of attacks, which include previous, previously found attacks instances. Those four types of attacks are authenticator rebinding attack, parallel session attack, privacy disclosure attack, denial of service attack. We also carried out authenticator rebinding attack on two popular Android apps, we responsibly disclosed the vulnerabilities and received one confirmed vulnerability ID. The authenticator rebinding attack is performed in registration process and the attacker can bind the user's account into the attacker's device. The attacker needs to convince the user to install a malicious UC ASM or authenticator into her device. This figure demonstrates the rebinding attack when the user install a malicious UF client. When the user is registering, she chooses the malicious UF client rather than the honest UF client to communicate. The malicious UF client redirects the messages to the attacker's device and uses the attacker's authenticator to continue the UF operations and send back the response messages. Then the attacker can bind the user's account into the attacker's device and impersonate the user. This is a screenshot when we perform this attack on China Mobile Pay apps. When a victim installs a malicious UF client and trigger a UF registration, the device will let the user choose the UF client to communicate with. By disguising icons and names, the users cannot distinguish which one is the honest one. Once they choose the wrong one, then the attacker will control her account. Last but not least, we suggest the FIDO UF protocol to make the following changes. First, we recommend the FIDO should present security requirements and goals in a more explicit way in the specifications. Then, we recommend FIDO modify the KH access token mechanism by adding some authentication mechanism, but not only using a simple token. Last, we recommend the additional UF entities should be authenticated before communication to prevent attacks from malicious entities. In summary, we formalize the UF protocol, identify minimal assumptions for the security properties to hold, discover the attacks, and give some recommendations. I want to thank everyone for your attention. We open sourced our tool UF Worry in GitHub. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at, at these email addresses. Thank you.